Good afternoon, Divya. Can you hear me? Good afternoon, sir. Yes, sir. I can hear you, sir. Good. Is my voice clear, audible, or meek? It is clearly audible, sir. I think you have to speak more clearly or come closer to the mic or, or keep the mic closer to you because your voice is slightly light, healthy. Hello. I know better. Okay, sir. Keep the mic closer to your mic. Yes, sir. <clears throat> well, so welcome to this, uh, whatever you call the interview or discussion. And uh, I find that uh, you have been, uh, you have, you come from Bhopal. Yes. Sir. And uh, you have also worked for some time uh, in some organization. And now this is your civil service. Which attempt? But this will be my fourth attempt, sir. Fourth attempt, yes. I just saw somewhere there. And uh, you have. Optional papers are political science and internationalization. Am I correct? Yes, sir. So yes, your sir. academic background is, is engineering in electrical engineering. Yes, sir. B tech in 2019. Yes, so sir. what made you select political science internationalization as the optional subject? What was the reason? Why did you opt for it? So firstly, in school times, I had some interest in the social sciences, which we studied. And secondly, sir, the subject also had good amount of overlap with the general studies subjects. So I thought mm -hmm. that it would be good to choose political science and international okay, relations. Mm -hmm. So is it uh, uh, also the reason uh, that you have uh, books available or literature available? Or is it, do you think it's a scoring paper? Is it, is it also the reason? Or just yes, you, so mentioned, seeing, you mentioned that? So seeing the past trends, it was also suggested that it is a scoring optional and the study material is easily available for this optional, sir. Mm, yes. And I thought so. That's what I was, since you did not mention, I thought I must remind you about these two points also. Uh, Anyway, interesting. Uh, so when you say political science, and when you talk about other subjects, similar subjects as sociology, economics, so only with political science, you use the word science. Why we use the word science with political science? And not with yes. economics or sociology or philosophy, all these allied subjects. Sir, I think uh, the subject science is a, a systematic study about certain phenomena. But in political mm -hmm. science, we are studying certain political phenomena and the political institutions like the state and the political concepts like justice, power, and democracy. So that is why mm -hmm. the yes. word science is generally associated with the subject. No, I'm just telling you that economics, you don't use the word science, economic science. Economics is a lot of statistical data, a lot of empirical data, a lot of analytical data, and uh, theories. So, but they do, still do not say economic science. Any yes, reason, reason comes to your mind in comparison to economics? No, sir. I'm sorry, but in comparison to economics, I'm not able to. All any other okay. subjects is sociology. Uh, sir, I'm not aware about those subjects okay. properly. Okay. Good. Okay. No problem. No problem. Give a thought to it. Give a thought to it. You may search on some on some uh, internet platforms with thought on it. Okay. Yes. So another thing, question comes to my mind, uh, which is very commonly asked. Uh, political science uh, is, as you said, a study about the power, and state, and justice, and things like that. Now, uh, how far are political science and the real politics are uh, synonymous or are helpful to each other? Political science is it helpful to our political processes, politics as it actually takes place? But I think the political science is helpful in the political processes. 
because sir, for example if i talk about a political uh, scholar like plato he talks about an idle state and how an idle state can be there so political science mm -hmm. just guides but Jetha, it, my dear young lady the when the when the very word you use ideal state so it's ideal it is not achievable and all the scholars are perhaps unanimous in criticizing plato that the state is an ideal state which cannot be achieved therefore it's called ideal state that's my understanding so the the political science the ideal concept which plato is giving of ideal state is nowhere found in any state any country yes so sir how, it is how not is it? Sure. Sir, it, it yes, please carry on. A, carry on. Carry on. It sets a guidelines. It helps the state to know that what can be done to achieve the ideal state cannot be achieved, but we can always aspire to be better and be progressive. So in that way, political mm. science guides the state and the different values. Like uh, we study about democracy, so the ideas mm. and the foundation of democracy that is taught through political science. So it is like a guiding light which we should try to. There is a, well, well said. Well said. There is a saying I have read somewhere or heard somewhere that the democracy is a hat which has been worn by so many people that this has lost its shape. What do you understand from this statement? Should I repeat? So, uh, democracy I'm... is a hat which has been worn by so many people that has lost its shape. So it is said because the uh, different countries are adopting different forms of democracy and there is no single form. So that is why uh, different countries have worn the hat of democracy and it has changed its shape uh, varying according to the different countries. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, so North India. Korea also claims... Mm -hmm. Yes, North Korea. Uh, also claims to be the democratic republic of North Korea. However, mm -hmm. the democracy that we practice in India is uh, completely different from what uh, other countries. Uh, like yes, North that's Korea right. You're claim. right. Mm -hmm. So, which which model can we we can say yes, this is the right model, a good model, the workers model, the best model. You have American model, you have British model, you have a North Korean model, you have Indian model, you have a Egyptian model, you have a Pakistan model. So, which can be the good? So, we can say, okay, here, here we can put a finger, here's the best model, here's the model we can say is good for us. But I think every country is adopting the different models of democracy according to their needs and aspirations. Uh, for example, in America, the, uh, the Supreme Court has uh, huge powers, or there is complete separation of power, but uh, the democracy in India has checks and balances kind of system. So, according to us, the Indian model is the best suited model for India, which is there. Okay. The Indian model is the best suited. So, Indian model is dependent upon, as, as, as generally says, the British model? Yes, sir, it is influenced by the British model, but we have uh, adapt, we have had selective adaptation from the British model. So. Okay, selected. Okay, that's right. Very good. Uh, now, this another question which comes to my mind is that uh, uh, the the uh, democracy rating or grading has been done world over. There are agencies. Where do we stand? India stand in democratic rate, rating, the grading. Which which on which point, which place we stand among the among the rest of the countries? Uh, sir, uh, pardon me, sir. I can. I am not able to recall the ranking which okay. the India stands. Okay. 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 Fine. I am. I have handed over to right. Prof. Sangeeta. Divya, you are from Bhopal. Yes, ma'am. Tell me on tourist places in, in and around Bhopal, yes, which adds to the tourism of Madhya Pradesh. Ma'am, the first and foremost place would be the uh, Bhoj wetland in Bhopal uh, and the, na the one Vihar National Park which is adjacent to the uh, Bhoj wetland. Uh, secondly, ma'am, there are two uh, UNESCO World Heritage Sites near Bhopal. One is Bhim Betika and the another one is uh, Sanchi Stupas. Uh, then, ma'am, the 
uh, monuments that were built by the Begums of Bhopal, like the Tazul Masjid, uh, the Gohar Mahal. These are the very good tourist places in Bhopal. Okay. Uh, if I talk about Sachi, Sachi, is it uh, part of the Buddha circuit of tourism, which is being uh, promoted as a Buddha circuit site? Is it a part? Ma'am, I don't think so that it is a part yet. Uh, it, it is to be included, but it yet, has not been. Yet? What do you mean by yet? All Buddhist uh, related relics are part of uh, Buddha circuit. It, it, yet means it's part. Uh, Ma'am, I think it is going to be a part, but it is uh, not the part of the Buddha circuit. What do you mean by that? Uh, there are two circuits, Ramayana circuit and Buddha circuit. Uh, it's a pilot project. It has to come into offering. The, so, but how can you say that it is not part of the circuit? It is no, a part of the circuit. Yes, Whether it has become operational or not, that is an irrelevant question here. If you are, uh, please tell me, uh, if I ask you to uh, talk about UP, once upon a time it was considered as a Bimaru state. Now it is uh, doing very well on the growth trajectory cross domestic uh, issues, GDP. How do you see the growth of UP? In what parameters UP has done well, better than Madhya Pradesh? You may compare, you may not compare. Uh, yes, ma'am, UP is progressing. Uh, today, it ha its economic growth is more, so it has come out from the tag of Bimaru's, uh, Bimaru state. And also, ma'am, there has been industrial development in UP. Uh, there are some defense corridors also which are coming up in UP for boosting the industrial development. And also the tourism industry is also flourishing in UP. Uh, so, and the social indicators, socioeconomic indicators are also improving there, uh, like the health status. And the recent multidimensional poverty index, which was released by Niti Aayog, that also shows that uh, many people have been up uplifted from poverty line in UP. So in these senses, UP is uh, is observing the growth trajectory in the recent times now. Where does it stand now? Suppose if Maharashtra is number one, after that, give me four, uh, two, three, four, five numbers. Which states are there? Mama, I have to read about the, these. Uh... UP has uh, surpassed Tamil Nadu and then become second uh, in the list. Now, uh, if I talk about unemployment and per capita income, per capita income is very, uh, you know, a poor indicator of India's economy. I would say we have a long way to go in terms of per capita income and in terms of uh, social indicators. Where does Madhya Pradesh stand? Every state also does a per, per capita income index like Delhi has done recently. So what is the per capita income of Madhya Pradesh? Ma'am, the per capita income of Madhya Pradesh recently came out to be nearly 60,000 rupees. Uh, so it has to be... 60,000 rupees? Uh, yes, ma'am, 60,000 rupees. Per capita income of the uh, people in the state? Yes, ma'am, uh, from the sources, what I've read, it was... Around the 60, national, national figure is uh, $2,500. Wow. Mom, I read in the INR, so... Okay, okay, it might be so. so how do we work on that and improve that? Mom, um, I think in the, uh, the economic uh, structure of Madhya Pradesh, it is mainly dominated by the agricultural sector. And the income in the agricultural sector is still less. Uh, nearly 47% uh, of the contribution is coming from agricultural sector. So if we can shift the focus on the industrial sector or increase now, the manufacturing. Tell me which industry has come up in Madhya Pradesh. Give me an example of that. Anything in the offing or it has already come? Any industry? Mm. Mama, a recent industry which has come in Madhya Pradesh. 
that will be only show that we are able to work on the on that direction ma'am the textile industries and the food processing industry is working comparatively well Which in new textile industry has come up in madhya pradesh in last 3 4 years can you name it which textile industry ma'am i am not aware about it properly okay no problems let's talk about uh, rural women as uh, of the indian ecosystem their you know ease of living has improved standard of living has improved for there are perceptible changes in the life of indian rural women give me the two three four programs which have brought this change yes ma'am i'm talking only about rural women okay. ma'am can i please take a moment to think about it yes please Can I please speak? Yes. Uh, Ma'am, firstly, the self-help groups which are brought up in the rural areas, uh, they are helping in microfinancing in the rural areas for the women. Uh, mm -hmm. Secondly, Ma'am, the "Beti uh, Bachao, Beti Badha, Beti Bachao, Beti Badha" program. Suppose I am a lay person. I am a naive person. Show me the result. Mom, should I show the results? Yeah, these are very abstract able... figures. Beti badhao, beti bachao. These are abstract programs. I am asking about the result, where you can see perceptible change in ease of living of a rural woman. Very simple yes, question. Ma yes, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, the Ujjwala scheme, which was brought. Yes, so very in good. That, very good. Yes. Uh, uh, Just name the that, scheme. The... I would understand. then yes ma'am uh, ma'am the manrega scheme also which is providing uh, the employment to the rural women uh, yes this is uh, okay. providing guaranteed okay. employment um, and ma'am the uh, you know microfinancing initiatives through self help groups like which is happened in see the holistic picture har ghar nal the indian rural women didn't had water at home Didn't had toilet at home. Didn't had gas at home. Right? Yes, ma'am. Didn't had a bank account. These are the four basic, most yes, primary things which has been provided to Indian rural women. Every house yes. now has all these four things. Doesn't matter. Let Let me ask you one more question. How much is the contribution of the MSME sector in the GDP of India? Total GDP. How much per in terms of percentage is contributed by MSME sector? Just you can take a uh, guess also. You don't have to be very very to the point. Yes, ma'am. Oh. Ma'am, in among the in the manufacturing sector, I can recall that MSME is contributing forty percent of the GDP in the manufacturing sector. Which itself is twenty twenty nearly twenty five percent of the GDP of the country. Yeah, service sector is very little uh, there, and the total outcome is about twenty nine thirty percent. You are uh, quite at it. Uh, why manufacturing is the major part of the micro micro finance, isn't it? Whatever yes, little skill they they are using. All right, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, you have done electrical engineering can you tell me about thevenin theorem used for circuit analysis what is thevenin theorem uh, yes sir uh, so it, it talks about the voltage uh, the voltage drop at the several nodes or in a circuit so thevenin theorem says that uh, the voltage at one node Uh, would be equal to the voltage flowing in the other nodes in that particular closed circuit sir what is uh, super node in this connection what is super node super node yes sir uh, sorry sir i am not able to recall it properly right now 
tell me whether uh, a uh, pn junction is active device or passive device pn junction okay. diode is active device or passive device now so it would be a passive device uh, because it works only when some voltage difference is applied uh, between it so only then it can function sir uh, which is more efficient a uh, dc transmission or ac transmission which is more efficient dc transmission or ac transmission so the uh, dc transmission would be more efficient because less losses would be there like the eddy current losses mm -hmm. and the ohmic losses would be less what is the frequency of domestic supply ac supply in india so it is 50 hertz it is around 50 hertz uh, in india exactly 50 hertz or around 50 hertz so it is not maintained exactly 50 hertz it is near about 50 hertz some a uh, minor minor difference uh, is there why the fluctuation what are the major reason for such fluctuation so because the generation and the peak load the load load are is not same always so depending upon what the load is uh, the frequency has certain amount of variations what do you suggest for the rural electrification of in india what will be your major point for implementation of rural electrification uh, so the voltage profile in the rural electrification uh, uh, has to be maintained because at times proper voltage uh, is not provided in the rural areas and secondly sir the load factor of the rural areas has to be analyzed properly because uh, uh, water pumps and other heavy loads can be there in the rural areas uh, so these things i think for electrification of rural areas and uh, what a uh, uh, electrical engineer can do as administrator how it can help uh, in uh, your service as a bureaucrat electrical engineering is it uh, not sir. a wastage of resources government you have graduated from a government college nit so is it not wasted of government resources government has spent a lot of money on you so sir, i okay. think it, it is can... justified how can you utilize it the knowledge of electrical engineering yes sir it is justified and the knowledge of engineering can be used in civil services also uh, because sir, firstly we gain various skills uh, in our engineering uh, which we can apply in civil services like the uh, the scientific temper understanding the technology and uh, particularly power transmission the energy security in the country and also so going for sustainable development where the boost for renewable energy has to be given so these are the areas where the electrical engineers can particularly contribute in the civil services Good. tell me about uh, the relationship between uh, jain jain buddhism and japa meditation Hmm. I think in general. How Jain Buddhism is related to Japa meditation? Sir, I am not aware about the direct relationship, uh, but I think Japa meditation is uh, is the type of meditation which is done in uh, Hinduism, Buddhism, and Jainism, all the three religions. So uh, this meditation is also practiced in Jainism, sir. Uh, these are my views. We sect of uh, Jainism, so Tambar or Digambar, who practice Java meditation. Digambar or so Tambar? Sorry, sir, I am not aware about this. I will study about this more. Uh, tell me about uh, the uh, difference between black feminism and uh, mainstream feminism. What is the difference? uh so the mainstream feminism is overall for the women rights for all the women rights but the, the black feminism is particularly for the women of color uh, uh to give them rights uh, it is it is basically for the women who are uh, suffering racism also and gender based discrimination also sir what does uh, intersectionality means in context of uh, black female black women intersectionality 
What does it mean? So intersectionality in feminism means that even among females, there are certain discrimination like the upper caste uh, females or the lower caste females and the, the, the different classes of the females. So intersectional feminism means giving rights to every sections uh, of the female, be it black females or the white females, upper caste or lower caste, everybody should get the rights. So, uh, recently, a uh, bill was passed to uh, reserve seat in the parliament and legislative assembly. So, do you think that there should be quota within quota in wake of this intersectionality? Uh, sir, I think in this particular reservation also, uh, the reservation is being provided for the SCST women also, like the seats would be reserved for the SCST women also. So I think, so if the need is there and... What about actually, OBC women? What about so, other backward class women, which was read by uh, Uma Bharti from your estate only? He read the question. Yes, so they have not got the reservation in the, uh, the particular bill that has come up. In my view, uh, uh, to give a quota within quota, proper analysis has to be done to find out the economic and the social status in that. Only after that, this can be done. Otherwise, the the mandate of giving this quota can go can become less relevant. So, so after you proper are analysis, nearly, you are nearly, uh, hail from Hasangabad. How yes. did the city got its name, Hasangabad? It is named after the Malwa ruler Hoshang Shah who, rolled, who ruled Hoshangabad city. So after him, it was named Hoshangabad. Good, thank you. <clears throat> Hello, Dibya, how are you? I'm good, sir, thank you. Yeah, I'm good. Uh, have you heard about Sramanika, Sramanical tradition of Indian political thought? Um, so I'm not able to recall it. Okay, can you explain a little on how Buddha reacted to the earlier tradition, the earlier religious practices that was prevalent during Buddha or before Buddha? Uh, so he was not, uh, he <coughs> thought that certain practices uh, were against the dignity of the human being. Uh, for example, a discrimination based on certain criteria, uh, the upper class or the lower class. So in that way, he tried to ensure that everybody was treated equal, and the orthodox or the the orthodoxy that was prevalent by the Brahmanical society that could be eliminated. Fine. Uh, today, judiciary is facing several challenges, right? And Niti Aayog has recommended a few, a few suggestions, right, for reformation of Indian judiciary. Can you outline a few recommendations, you know, explained by or forwarded by Niti Aayog? I have not read about these recommendations yet. I will read about them. So. Basically, there was an India Act 75 report published by Niti Aayog, where so Niti Aayog has recommended a few suggestions uh, to bring some reform in challenge, you know, in judiciary. Okay, we must have heard about debate on all India judicial services. Yes, sir. Uh, recently, our president, honorable president has put a pitch here. You know, he pitched, she pitched that there should be all India judicial services. Do you think that all India judicial services would be a uh, right, you know, a correct way to bring some reform in Indian judiciary? Uh, so the all India judicial services can be a positive step to bring more judges and especially at the subordinate level where the vacancies are still there. So therein the judges can be brought in. Uh, but sir, there is a concern around it that uh, through this, the All India, uh, it will be an All India services. So judges will be given cadre in different uh, places. But the high, certain high court judges say that uh, 
it is better that the judges come from that particular city or from that particular state because in that case they can understand the problems of the ground or the grassroots in a much better way so that is one criticism i feel is there about the all india judiciary services but in my view in the la in the longer run it would be a good step sir to reform the indian judiciary but how will it impact on independence and integrity of the india's judiciary you know indian judiciary is a, an independent and integral institution right? it is independent from executive and or legislature right yes sir. but when the government the executive will appoint the judiciary right and will train judiciary how will it impact on integrity of india judiciary so i think like uh, there is a dedicated uh, constitutional institution for the recruitment of the civil servants in the same way there would be an independent institution for the recruitment of the judges through all india judicial services so the uh, the influence of executive would be less on the appointment of the judges and in that way the independence and integrity of the judiciary would be maintained uh, would be maintained okay fine um uh, you know bonapartist state um uh, uh, have you come on yeah yeah sure go ahead yeah sure 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 so may i please speak yeah go ahead uh, so with what i've read i can recall that bonaparte uh, Karl Marx talked about uh, the concept of Bonapartist state, wherein the state is all powerful, or the uh, it is um, the bureaucracy is very strong in a Bonapartist state. Uh, this much I can recall. Sir. Okay. Do you know uh, the state in African countries? Have you heard about Comprador State? Yes, sir. I have to read about it, sir. Okay, fine. Have you heard about Deep State? uh so deep state is something that is there in pakistan i think the military acts as a deep state because it has still has some uh unsaid role in the governance of the country so that is a deep state in my view okay fine you know recently in the red sea houthi group is very much in famous news right Yes. and it has houthi has attacked on india ship now houthi is an organization based on based in which country that is the organization based in yemen uh, mm. so have you heard about emmanuel kant uh, yes sir emmanuel kant uh, how emmanuel about... kant was different from hegel because both were you know pioneer of modern idealism right yes, sir. so how hegel idealism is different from kantian idealism so hegel has uh, focused more upon the importance of state hegel says that state is march of god upon the earth so hegel has been more state centric but emmanuel kant has focused more on the human dignity on the rights of the individual so in that way they both have been different in their approach how he why hegel focused on the state too much why it is so uh, so i think he himself was working for the state in his individual capacity so uh, no, he also no, wants no 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 he, yes i know he is uh, working as a you know chair of the department of philosophy at the university of berlin and he was appointed by the education minister of germany or that time there was no germany that was a persia right mm -hmm. but it does not mean you know it is a mere official seat is not enough for a philosopher to argue that a state is a god now he had some philosophical you know commitment or he had philosophical uh, inducement what was the philosophical argument behind you know identifying a state as a divine entity or march of god on the earth so may i please uh, take a moment to think yeah about yeah yeah it. go ahead yeah yeah take a moment mm -hmm. uh, 
uh, uh, I'm not able to properly recall that why Hegel has. Because he thinks you know state is absolute consciousness. Yes. Sir. Right. It is a final evolution. Yes. Right. There cannot be evolution beyond it. Yes. Sir. It is absolute truth, and that's why it is identical to God, isn't it? Anyway, um, you must have heard about um, a radical feminism. Yes. Sir. What was the goal for radical feminism? So the goal for radical feminism was uh, mainly to speak against the patriarchy and the uh, the domination that was created by the. But that was a goal for the... liberal feminism too. Uh, yes, sir, but uh, liberal feminism also talked about equal rights for both men and women. Liberal feminism said that even sometimes men are sufferers of patriarchy. But radical feminism says that uh, patriarchy is because of the men. So it was in some way against the, the, the men or the patriarchy that was exercised by the men. So radical feminism is radical in this sense. Why they were called radical? Because of their very radical ideas, like uh, depending on technology. Uh, Have you heard than... about the Maru state? Yes, sir. Well, who are the they? Why the um, Maru state is characterized? Uh, so this uh, was this was a term given by some economist. To uh, yeah. I think uh, his name is Ashish, sir. And uh -huh, uh, Ashish. Sir, mm -hmm. yes, sir. Uh, so so uh, he talked about certain states like Bihar, uh, Madhya Pradesh. Mm. Uh, no, no, uh, you... Maru is a Maru is a Haryana, Punjab, Western UP, not Bihar, not Madhya. That was a Dimaru. I'm talking about Dimaru, the daughter Dimaru. killing sister. Yeah, okay. Dimaru. Same yeah, author sorry. has given both concepts. Yeah. Uh, so I could not hear Dimaru properly. Sir. Okay. Yeah. What is Dimaru state? Uh, so, so the states where the fee, the status of the women or the girl child is not uh, very good or where the scope of improvement is there, those are the mm. states uh, that are the Maru states. So can you tell me uh, two basic uh, schemes that government have initiated for women empowerment in India? Yes, sir. Um. Uh, so the Ujjwala scheme, I would say, for uh, for providing clean fuel for the women, mm. yeah. and uh, uh, and these are Beti Bachao, Beti Padhao schemes uh, for the girl child and also the empowerment of the women. Good enough. Good enough. Okay, your interview is over. Now the chairperson will, you know, brief you. So. <coughs> So Divya, well done. Uh, I think I'm personally quite impressed by your performance. You were quite confident and comfortable in talking to us. And uh, sometimes you appear to losing your confidence. The reason was basically where you were not confident about your facts, about your knowledge part of it. And uh, there you were fumbling. Area, areas where you were had good knowledge and your confidence level was very high. So the basic issue is that some area where you yourself must be feeling that you have not performed well, uh, you require more knowledge, more understanding. And uh, this is uh, one important aspect which I found in you also, that many statements which you made, they were correct, but they were not substantiated with the help of the data, anecdotes, examples, you have to be prompted for that. Uh, UP economic growth, Madam asked you, you said it's more, it's good, but you are not substantiated with any anecdote, data, or, or a statistic where you can say, okay, this is the growth, GDP growth of UP, or this is the infrastructure growth of UP in terms of data or examples or anecdotes. Same is of, uh, uh, you have indicated socioeconomic indicators are high. You have to be specific. Same as in case of per capita income of Madhya Pradesh, you must be you must having some statistic at your command. 
that's your estate. So in these certain areas where you are not comfortable, mainly because you are not having this information available to you. So definitely, Divya, in these areas, you have to improve your knowledge content. When is your interview? And the date has not come yet. Date has not come. So you may have sufficiently time, maybe a month or so. So you have quite uh, uh, quite a sufficient time to improve your uh, performance and score better and to be finally selected hopefully by your performance. So yes. that is my question. Uh, 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 Certain areas is basically I would like to suggest is like MSME sector, which was talked to you or discussed with you about with my ma'am this contribution. The huge area contributing to India's export, India's GDP, you must know about it. You must visit the website of Ministry of MSME. Uh, it's a very, very important vital sector for economy. It has both organized sector as well as unorganized sector also under this uh, broader uh, definition. So yes. more go deep into this sector. Democracy we talked about. Uh, you are quite good in your responses. Uh, but uh, when you say that uh, North Korea is also democratic, you are giving as an example, of course, but you have to be then uh, distinguish in good democracy and bad democracy also. Uh, this, this I want you must know in your mind. Okay. Similarly, many subjects, I don't want to list it, deep state and feminism, these are subjects you would have talked and discussed. We require more studies and more knowledge. We have been suggesting candidates uh, to go through Sunset TV, watch it carefully. You have had sufficient time. If you watch it daily, one hour, any good program, you will cover a whole lot of subject, whole lot of subject of government policies, program, schemes, development, discussion on them. So you can have a lot of clarity on many of these subjects or current affairs particularly, even including foreign affairs, etc. So this is one of the good source to improve your knowledge base. Then yes. uh, we have been suggesting to uh, candidate to go visit website of particularly uh, social welfare ministries, health ministry, women and child ministry, women and child development ministry, uh, education ministry, agriculture ministry, and, and a, a, a small scale industry ministry. You will visit their website, you will get a lot of concise and focused information on their schemes and programs. Many, many schemes, good programs uh, of uh, uh, government welfare scheme, you come to know about that. that. By your Maharashtra, Madhya Pradesh website, you must visit Madhya Pradesh government website. You will come to know what information is this required. You are expected to know about your state. They will expect you to know about your state. I also suggest candidates that they must enumerate certain areas or maybe in the form of questions, maybe sectors, maybe 25, 30, 50 questions you can think of in your mind and find answers about them. Discuss with your peer group if you have one. Discuss with your mentors. Discuss with your uh, uh, those who have already appeared into the interview board. This will help you in clarity of mind and in your communication. The communication is quite good. Your your English and uh, language is also good. One final thing from my side, before my colleagues want to say this, uh, I do not know what would you like to wear when you go for interview. Yes, sir. But I'm planning to wear a sari in, in the yes, interview. Yes, good. That's good. Sari of a good, good color. I think ma'am will be able to help you choosing a good sari color and uh, design. But I generally suggest that a good, good, uh, sober color and good uh, sari which you can wear. Thank you. Wish you all the best. And if you have anything to ask, please, you can you feel free to ask. Okay. If you want to be say something, what's uh, sari to say? Thank you very much. Thank you, Divya. You want to ask anything? Uh, no, sir. I understood you know, with your guidance. Okay. 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 Wish you all the best. best. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Online? Yes, sir. Actually, we have.